All right, so let's talk about error. So we just got done learning about absolute value, um, where you have these two straight up and down bars, and then you could have something like five minus 10 inside of there. And so we learned that that's the distance from zero that that value is, so it doesn't really matter what's inside of that, those two straight up and down bars. Um, whether it's positive or negative, your answer is going to be positive. So this would be positive 5. So we're going to take that and use it in what we call absolute error. Um, so our book denotes it as delta x. That's what that little triangle right here is called. It's a Greek letter delta. So it's, they use it as like change. You might have seen it with slope before. Um, so it's the change in x. So we take our true value and subtract the measured value. So generally in the world of uh, engineering or science, there's a like a, a true value and then a measured value. So we, we draw plans for something and then when we actually make it, you know, there are defects in the metal that we use, for example, or the, the way that the printer printed something or whatever, and it's slightly off. Um, and depending on what area of science or engineering you're in that can be really really bad if it's really you know if it's off or it can be okay depending on that tolerance is the word um, so we're going to talk about absolute error first and then we take that value that we get from absolute error and put it in for our relative error so absolute error is just how far away is it from the the, the value that we wanted it to be and then relative, relative is like relating it to something else. So the something else being the true value that we wanted it to be in the first place. Um, and then we go to percentage error. So percentage error, anytime we see percent, it just means times 100. <clears throat> so the formula that we're going to keep referring back to is our true value. So... This is the absolute value. So it's the absolute value of our true value um, minus the measured value divided by the true value. So we use VA for the measured value. So I'll write it up here. VA, VA stands for approximate or measured. And then we subtract VE, which stands for exact VE is our exact and then we divide that by the exact so that's our general formula for the relative error and then to go to from that to percent error we just have to multiply that answer by 100 so this stuff here that I'll highlight in green in is the relative area formula and then when we multiply it by a hundred that's when we get our percent error so let's go ahead and do a few examples here so the hardest thing with this is to identify the exact versus the approximate and sometimes this kind of gets tricky um, and so you kind of have to think about it in the circumstances like which one were they sometimes they'll tell you um, which one's intended and which one was measured kind of thing. Um, and some, it, it only gets weird kind of later on. But um, I think for most of the problems that you're going to see during this unit, it should be pretty straightforward. So let's look at these three examples. So Dennis wants to buy a card for his wife. He calculates the amount that the card will be as 450. Maybe Dennis, you know, was looking at cards the other week and, kind of looking at the prices when he looked at them and that was like an average so he's like yeah i'm gonna spend at least 450. then we get to the actual price is four dollars so then what is dennis's percent error so he planned on 450 maybe he just brought cash from his change jar or something and he brought 450. what's his error how off was he um so our exact the actual is our exact So we see that word actual is how we know it's our exact. And then our approximate 
or are measured is what he thought. He calculated it, or he, he was kind of guessing that it was that. So this is like... Okay, so we can use our formula that's right here. VA minus VE divided by VE. So we set that up, and we get his actual. So that was 450. Was his approximate minus 4 divided by 4. And all of that is in the absolute value brackets, and then we would multiply that by 100. So if we go ahead and do that, we get that. Let me change this on my Desmos here. We get that that is 12.5% error. Okay. So looking at number six, it says Alana's math class had 24 students yesterday she miscounted the class and recorded it as 20 what was her percent error so 20 is her calculated that's what she thought minus 24 divided by 24 and that's in our absolute value brackets times 100 because they keep asking for percent error. That's generally what we're going to end with. Uh, they're not going to ask you to stop at absolute error or at relative. They want to know the percent error. So if we plug in these values to our equation and do the math, so 20 minus 24 divided by 24, we get. 16.666667, so 67% error. All right, so as long, the, the, the tricky part is that if you get these, these two values in the, in the numerator, they can be either, either way, um, but the number in the denominator is what usually messes you up. So if you have the wrong number as the exact, then that's why your answer may be a little different. So keeping that in mind is like, what did they kind of, what was their plan? And then what was the final? So in our, in our last two examples, um, the actual price of the card. So when you get to the, the register and pay, that was the actual price. That was the exact price. So in our second one, the actual amount of students is 24 and what she thought she had in her class was 20. So the actual is 24, the exact is 24, the approximate or what she thought she had was 20. Okay, so let's look at this last one. Maybe take a second, pause the video and see if you can set it up correctly before I do that right now. So we have that she calculates the cost of the book as 50 dollars so if she calculates it that's going to be our approximate she you know maybe did some averages it doesn't really say how she calculated it but she calculated it so our va is 50 our ve will be the other number so the actual price so again there's that that keyword here actual that helps us kind of see that so whenever they use that word it's pretty pretty easy that's actually an easy way to get confused uh, when I did an engineering we used actual minus or approximate minus actual so they both are starting with a so it kind of messes you up but actual is our exact value so that was 56 so now we can plug that into our formula so 50 minus 56 divided by 56 all that is in our absolute value brackets times 100 and so we can plug that in on your calculator or Desmos. Desmos works really well for this. Uh, so 50 minus 56 divided by 56 gives us an error of 10.71 percent. 
So depending on, so these ones are all kind of real world examples when you get down into engineering or science, they will, they're usually not allowed to be that high. You want your error to be very, very small. So under 1% is uh, usually good, like 0.5%, half a percent. Um, and it changes depending on what area of life you are. Think about um, a like a valve or something that would go into your eye and how small um, the different parts of your eye are and where it would fit. I actually had a professor in college that designed a valve. So the smaller something is, the more um, error is introduced. So even if you have like 0.1 millimeters, if it's off by 0.01, that's kind of a big deal. So sometimes you use really big numbers, sometimes you use really small numbers. Um, so hopefully this helps. Um, and thanks for watching.